Hello and welcome back to this van conversion series. Please like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss an episode. We will be following our conversion of a Citroen Relay L3 H2 week by week. So if you missed last week's video, you can see it in the link here. Good morning everyone. Uh, start of week six now on the Stanley conversion. Uh, we made really good progress last week, uh, getting a lot of the painting done, uh, top coating all the cupboard fronts and getting those built. Uh, I'll just show you them now, what they look like. Uh, we've got on this uh, table here, one of the box seats, that's all top coated, ready to go back in and have the electrical unit, um, the power management system and the chargers installed. So we'll be doing that this week, connecting up all the chargers to the battery bank. Um, we've got the boxes made and painted for the cutlery units um, and the shelves for the wardrobe. Uh, on the shelves, we like to put a lip on the front edge just to prevent clothes from sort of sliding forward uh, as it's a moving vehicle, uh, but they'll be going in soon. Uh, we've got a drying rack over here with some of the unit fronts. So the unit fronts have been made uh, and the holes, the blum hinges uh, have been cut as well. And there you can see the blum hinges uh, and also the holes for um, the handles as well. So we'll be getting all the hardware on the cupboard fronts and the doors this week. Um, other jobs, we're going to be getting in the ceiling slats. Uh, so really nice slatted look ceiling using pine tongue and groove. We'll show you how to do that. Um, and also getting the walnut worktop cut um, for the window sills, which will be here, here and on the sliding door. Uh, the table for the dining area and also the worktop for both the near side kitchen unit, the extension and also the uh, unit above the boiler. Uh, we'll get the worktop on there as well, yeah, so stay tuned for more updates. This is a piece of pine tongue and groove. Uh, it's 100 mil by 19 mil um, on like the dimensions, but it actually shrinks the real size is about uh, 90 mil by 14. So the thickness is about 14 mil. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this tongue and groove into uh, our strips for the ceiling. Uh, to do that, we first run it through a table saw, uh, just so we get square edges, so that the tongues and the grooves are taking off. Um, and this has now got a dimension of 74 mil wide by 14 mil thick. Uh, and then to finish the edges, what we like to do is just use a router with a round over bit to create uh, a half inch round over. Um, and what this does, it gives a nice uh, routed finish uh, rather than a sawn edge. Again, it's at 74 mil. Um, we just use a trim router with a half inch round over bit on it to create this effect. Um, so the first stage is to cut all your timber to length. Um, I've used the SketchUp program to work out uh, what, what lengths we need. We need about 45 meters in total um, for this pine. And yeah, we need to cut it to length, rip it down, router it. We're then gonna sand it, which is what Mark's doing now over there. He's just sanding all of these pieces. Um, and once it's all sanded back, we'll then use some walnut stain and some, uh, some rag just to give it a nice walnut uh, color that will match the worktops. So yeah, stay tuned and we'll uh, show you the next step of the process. And we're just working on the ceiling slats. You can see we've got a walnut stain. Uh, this is the first coat and we'll probably go for a couple of coats um, to match the walnut worktops. You can see Mark's just working the edges with a foam uh, roller. Uh, we like using this or a sort of cotton rag uh, just to work, work the uh, stain into the grain and yeah really happy with how it's looking so we'll do this for all the lengths and then apply a second coat before installing mark's just finishing off the ceiling slats you can see second coat's on now and we're really happy with the tone of this wood now uh, we think it looks really nice and we'll give this an oil with some danish oil as well just for, before we put it up uh, so yeah he's been working on that using that foam roller with the walnut stain. I'm about three quarters of the way through installing the slats into the ceiling. So what I'm going to do now is show you the method that we use to fix them up against the ceiling. We use an adhesive called Fix-All to run a bead 
along the uh, bad edge of the uh, slat and then once this is fixed up in place uh, we use a couple of these packers which are 14 mil uh, wide just to ensure that the gap between each slat's even. And then the final part to this is to use the nail gun with a 32 mil brad nail uh, just to fire a nail in through the 6 mil baseboard and the 12 mil plywood strips below. What I'm going to do now is cut a notch in one of the slats. Uh, this is so that it can fit around the shape of the shower cubicle. And to do that, I'm going to use a combination square, um, and I've set that to the depth that it needs to be, which is 50 millimeters. So I'll just place this on the edge of the slat so that I get a cut line that's perfectly square uh, to the slat edge. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run my pencil line using the combination square as a scribe. I'm just going to run that along the length of the slat so that I get my cut line all the way. What I'll do is I'll just mark that, just so that I know that this is the piece of waste, and then the bit that's remaining will then fit up against the ceiling. We've rough cut the worktop for the kitchen unit. You can see we need to just add the upstand to the back. But what we're going to do before that is just cut in the holes for the oven. So we'll cut the uh, rectangle for the oven flip up lid and also the sink inserts, which are going to be uh, on the driver's side. Stuart's just marking out the cut line for the uh, uh, oven lid we're going to cut out and we've got the working drawing here on the right hand side this is going to be the sink insert which we're going to cut out a couple of hole saws as well this one's for the tap and that's obviously so you can lift the insert out and what we'll do is we'll actually probably chop this in half as well so you've got two halves to this sink insert and then we'll make the cuts and fit everything together here you can see the kitchen unit uh, we fitted the under mounted <coughs> sink um, that's siliconed in and it's just secured in using the brackets here and here and here. And we've also uh, fitted the tap and the upstand at the back, which is just butt jointed against the worktop. And then we run a bead of brown silicon just to neaten up that join and prevent water ingress. Um, happy with how it fits, it's been oiled four or five times, we're going to keep on oiling it every day which is really important to just hydrate the wood and yeah we'll get this in the van but really happy with how it looks. Stuart's just cutting down the extension which is going to be on the end of the kitchen unit and he's just using the straight edge that we obviously went through in last week's video and he'll be using a plunge saw with a depth of 28mm just so it passes through the whole of that unit. Just make sure everything's square before we cut it and then that'll be cut to length and we can round to the edges before oiling with Danish oil. Here we've got the window sill cut down with the notches and this is one of the back door windows. You can see it just slots in underneath the architrave and then it looks really nice. We're also working on the tabletop, which is going to be the dining area table and the table that moves down to form the bed. And what we're doing is on the underside of this piece of wood, we're just routering a channel that is going to be 25 mil wide and it's just in from the edges about 10 mil either side. And into this channel, which is about five mil deep, we're just going to fix some metal flat bar it's aluminium flat bar that's 25 mil wide by five mil deep. And what that will do is we'll obviously fit that into the channel. It'll be flush with the bottom surface and then we'll screw it in so that it provides extra uh, strength um, across the joins of the butcher block. 
just to prevent them from bowing over time as the, uh, the table is gonna be supported in the center with a lagoon leg. So there'll be weight distributed across the edges and the join uh, would bow over time if it didn't have these supports put in. Well, that wraps up most of the carpentry aspects of this build. In next, next week's episode, I'll be finalizing the electrics and control panels, building the shower door, and putting the finishing touches to the flooring and the door handles.